Hello, this is Lesson 3 of the Let Us Worship Part 1 course. I'm glad you're here for the first section of the lesson. Again, I'm Pastor Nate. Welcome. Worship services can look very different depending on where you live, your culture, your community. In Africa, a worship service may be held in the early morning before the sun is hot, gathering under the shade of a boab tree. In Europe, you may meet with a few group members at a city park or a community center. In Asia, you may have an available apartment on the 14th floor of a high-rise building where your group worships in the evening after work. When you're among believers sitting together studying God's Word or standing with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ singing together, or when you're relaxing at home watching online church on your phone, what do you think God sees as you're doing these things? We may welcome the thought of God seeing us at our best, in community with other believers, worshiping and praising Him. But God also sees us at other times. He sees our sins, all of our sins. The sins we commit today, the evil and dirty sins we committed last week, and the big, horrible sins that can haunt us for months, even years. Not only does God see all of these, but He also sees the hurt we've caused others because of our sins. Fortunately, what God sees at all times is His creation, an image of Himself in us. He sees Jesus in us, not some of the time, all of the time. You and I appear before God in a white robe, shining and completely clean of all our sin and guilt. God accepts us as equals among all of our fellow believers, even the pastors among us. God sees you and I the same. You may not believe me, and that's okay, but let's learn from Scripture about how God truly sees us. Galatians chapter 3 says, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Listen carefully. Through faith in Jesus, you receive credit for Jesus' perfect life as if you had lived a perfect life yourself. Through faith in Jesus, you receive credit for Jesus' death on the cross as if you had taken that punishment yourself. The book of Isaiah says, Come now. Let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they shall be like wool. God's word uses the color white to portray purity and holiness. Through faith in Jesus, God considers you to have perfectly obeyed all of his commandments and all of our sins have been forgiven and completely removed. You no longer have spiritual stains and you are no longer connected to the sins you committed in the past. The sins from your past are no longer attached to you. God tells us throughout Scripture many, many times. Let's learn Psalm 103 to connect God's grace to our worship. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. So, you are sitting at worship, wherever it is and whenever it is, clothed in the white robe of holiness that Jesus won for you on the cross. And yet, we know very well that we continue to sin every day, even when it is not our intention. You may be thinking that this contradicts God's picture of us in our pure white robe. Let's learn more. While our sins are completely forgiven through the blood of Jesus, we cannot get rid of our sinful nature that we inherited from Adam and Eve. This is why, as humans, we continue to sin. We cannot obey God's law perfectly. We will never be perfect. We often call our inherited sinful nature the old Adam. It is not only our sinful flesh that attacks us daily and leads us to sin. Satan and demons continuously tempt us. 
Remember from the beginning, we are in a spiritual battle. The devil works hard to lead us away from God and into sin. We are God's imperfect children, but God corrects us, disciplines us, teaches and strengthens us through his word. We live in a state of grace. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. During a worship service, and always, God sees you and I clothed in Jesus' righteousness, but still in need of strength for the daily battle with our sinful nature. This is why regular worship is so important. In the second section of the lesson, you will learn more about the worship service with your TELL instructor and begin a plan for your final project. Until next time, I'm Pastor Nate. It has been my pleasure to guide you through the Let Us Worship Part 1 course. May God bless your continued study.